of EMA Cloud Rands today with Brad Parks of Morpheus Data and with our very familiar Jens Söldner. Today we are talking about uh, making the application release process less painful for the operators, right? A lot of the operators, they are not happy, they are stressed when the code gets thrown over the fence and it's like a whole disconnected universe and there's uh, no centralized automation. The developers just uh, build, test and uh, try and deploy the code. And at the end of the day, um, there, there's often a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of cost attached to every release. And if you're working on two, three, four releases at the same time, you absorb a lot of your manpower just with manual coordination, with execution of manual tasks. Uh, I know Jens sees this a lot in practice, but I want to ask Brad first. Uh, mm -hmm. Brad, I think this is what uh, the essence of Morpheus data is about, right? You tie the different areas together, the dev mm -hmm. and the ops. Yeah, when I met you for the first time, it was at the DevOps show, and right. I think even though there's a whole active community talking about DevOps, you know, dev and ops are still further apart than they are together for most large enterprises, yeah. and a lot of that has to do with the kind of the tooling, the skill set, the background of the people that are in those those functions. You've got tools designed for you know developers that are very script heavy, programmatic, and ops guys that aren't you know viewing in that, that methodology. You also have self-service tools that might be more ops-centric that don't provide the development teams the ability to, to move fast, to bring their own tools, to not be forced into a, a small small box. And so we try and really help bridge that gap by, uh, by bringing it together um, with self-service that's designed to give everybody the feeling that they've won. Right? The ops guys get control, very granular role-based access, integration into all their security controls, their load balancers, all their infrastructure. And the devs get the native you know, ability to do what they need in Python, set up CI, CD pipelines, you know, work with their tools without having to, to change what they do. Yeah, and it's crazy. We've been talking about this for how many years? 10 years at least, the self-service between developers and ops and... Uh, you, you don't see it in practice, right? There's still that same old problem. Well, you see it like fundamentally in a couple of accounts, large accounts that they've implemented mm -hmm. some yeah, tools from well-known vendors, but I would say they are not getting the most out of it. So it's still lacking and sometimes it's used for like providing a self-service portal to developers that can provision their own machines and maybe some application on top of it. But then it ends kind of quickly because the overhead required to really deliver value is like massive. Mm. And I think and there's an issue and maybe also mm. an opportunity for maybe more innovative competitors. Yeah, Brad, and then there's the, the data layer. Jens was just mentioning that, right? There is uh, data locality rules, especially where, where he is in, in Europe, but also in, in North America and Asia. Uh, that is another big aspect. We always talk about the DevOps tool chain, but how about governing the data centrally? That's also something that you guys focus on. Yeah, I think security and compliance has come up more and more um, as we're talking with these teams. Um, and the conversation earlier, a lot of these tools are, are great if you're going down one specific track. It's as you start to evolve from you know, bare metal to VMs to containers to what's next that you start to run into trouble. That's kind of the, call it the east-west pipeline. And then north-south, is it, is it on-prem? Is it on OpenStack? Is it on VMware? Is it in the public cloud? So trying to bring a singular security model with auditing and controls to that, that landscape is is where we find a lot of traction with ops teams um, integration into all the third-party security tools um, and even all the way into things like backup so mm. being able to do self-service provisioning and tear down but at the same time tie into mm. a beam backup or a com vault or some of the native yeah. tools that, that morpheus has um, it is really all about treating containers uh, no differently from treating VMs or bare metal or cloud resources or serverless resources functions as a service, right? Uh, there has to be one security because at the end, uh, nobody cares if you cannot, if you're not ready for the audit, right? The auditor is not going to say, oh, cool, you're doing containers or you're doing Kubernetes or 
So, so it's, it's not a problem this time or next time, you know, be more prepared. That's not how it's going to go. So thank you very much, Brad. Uh, thanks, Jens. This was another episode of uh, EMA Cloud Ring. Thanks, guys. Thank you.